Hello all, we have with us today racket number 690, the Yonix Astrox 68S, 68 skill. Um, obviously this one compares directly with the Yonix Astrox 68D. Okay, let's focus on the skill for a second. Very difficult to get hold of this racket at the moment. I think availability is, um, I think they said April or May, I'm not sure if they said March or May now, but it's, there's quite a lead time to get hold of these rackets. Um, we've got about, at the point of making this video, we've got about three or four in stock. So I think we're the only people you can get it from at the moment. Very, very difficult to get hold of. In India, you might be able to get hold of it. In Asia, you might be able to get hold of it, but pretty tough. Um, now we are selling it at www.badminton-racket-review.com. Link is below. Um, you can, yeah, there's no one else I can actually recommend at the moment, unfortunately. If you wait for a little while, you might be able to get it. If you're watching this video late into 2020, you may be able to get it from Badminton Bay. If you do, you can get a discount there by entering BRR5 in the coupon or voucher code in the checkout page. Okay, uh, price should be around £80 for this racket, around £79.99. So the 68S, what questions do I anticipate we're going to get from you people? So I expect you to ask me how does it compare to the 68D, but I also think you're going to be asking me how does it compare to the, 68, uh, the 38S and the 38D. Well, let's just, I've got my E-Zone open here, I've typed in, I've gone to the filter tab, typed in Astrox video, pressed the yellow filter button, press, uh, right at the bottom, press show all, and I have all of the Astrox videos that we have tested, and there's a highlight here. So the 38D and the 38S, the 39, uh, the 68D and the 68S, what can we tell you about them? Well, the first thing I'll tell you about them is that the 38D is the most flexible. Is that right? Uh, no, no. Sorry, the 38D and the Astrox 39 are the most two flexible rackets. Uh, all of the others, so the 68D and the 68S are stiff. Uh, the 38S is stiff. Um, and in terms of weight, well, there's not much dividing them. They're all in the same kind of 86, 87 grams that's our weight um, there is some power differences and the 68s actually delivered a pretty good power um, balance points also very interesting balance points varied the 68s had and the 68d have a balance point more significantly towards the head than the 38d and the 38s where their balance point is just a little bit towards the head so that is going to cause a feel difference a difference in feel between how the rackets play uh, this racket particularly scored pretty well in the e-zone test results now product specs so this actually is advertised as a 4u racket and as i've said already it weighs 86.5 grams with the grip supplied by yonix and the um, Yonix BG65 string in place there. It is supposedly a head heavy racket, but we have it down to be quite head heavy at 318 mil, bearing quite in the direction of the head. The stiffness of the shaft, it says it's medium, but actually we found it to be quite stiff and the ESO measurement also has it down as stiff. Um, other information that might be of help to you, maximum string tension, 28 pounds. 28 pounds string tension, G5 grip, made in Taiwan, um, isometric head, head heavy balance and five millimeters longer shaft. I think they're trying to say, I'm not sure. But that's about it really, that's all the information that we have on the racket. This is an SP coded racket for those of you who would like to know. So. Um, the design, well, they're all pretty much of a muchness, particularly the Astrox 68D, 68S, and 38, and 38D, and the 38S, they're all pretty much the same. There's, there's not much difference in them. They're very well finished, beautifully made, 
nothing interesting at all in terms of design I wouldn't say everything they've done is very well executed and as usual with Yonex it's perfect but just pretty boring to look at take a look at these close-up pictures and see what you think for yourself So how does this racket feel to use? Uh, it feels heavier than the 87 grams uh, to use. It does, um, however, feel, it doesn't have a, a massive airspeed. Uh, it doesn't feel particularly lively or quick. Uh, and the stiffness of the shaft, it does actually feel fairly stiff to use. So that's the first thing you need to think about. It doesn't feel light or lively. Um, it doesn't feel overly quick and it does feel pretty stiff to use. It also, uh, while it can deliver a pretty decent smash, I think it's going to be pretty challenging to deliver those smash speeds regularly um, when you're playing a doubles game with a good defender, two to good defenders opposite you having to smash a lot, I think you're going to feel, you start to feel pretty tired doing so. So. Uh, all in all, I don't think it, it, there isn't anything specifically I can mention here that I think it's outstanding at. Um, it, like I said, the smash would be the main thing. It can deliver reasonable power, but it's not supreme in any way, shape, or form. Um, it, and I think the smash aspect is good for its weight, and it scored well on our E zone weight versus power, um, but. And it's got a good overall score um, because it did delivered a fairly good smash and the control levels are average at best um, all doubles activities smash drive control repulsion defense just okay to be honest with you nothing particularly brilliant about it so what are you going to ask me next uh, you're going to ask me which astrox racket is the best one to go for Let's go back. Which ones could you be referring to? I don't think you'll be asking me about the 88. Um, the 88 D4U is a nice racket. Scored well. Uh, the 99s, they scored well. They scored okay. Nice scores, but terrible to use. But for most people, we're not going to get much out of those rackets. So look, the, the reality is this. If you're looking for... Um, an Astrox racket that's easy to use because the Astrox uh, 88 and 99 are range topping rackets and not many people can use those well. The Astrox 55, the Astrox 22, FB and Astrox Smash are lightweight versions of Astrox. All of them supremely capable. So is the Astrox 5FX but not as capable as the 2255 FB or Smash. So if you're looking for a lightweight version of the Astrox range, look at the Smash because I think that's one that you're going to get be able to access easier. It doesn't have a big smash though. It has a reasonable smash, enough power to keep pressure on but not enough to finish the point. Um, for overall play, despite the scoring, uh, the on-court testing would suggest that the Astrox 39 is going to be the one to look at because it's scored a very respectable score on the e-zone testing but the fact that it is not overly stiff it's quite light to use um, the balance point isn't massively in the direction of the head just makes it a nice racket to use i think that that would be my pick of the range the astrox 39 uh, is the best balance of all things um, Although it doesn't, it's so you know the thing is, if you're looking for killer smashes, then really you need to have the technique and you need to take on and go try the Astrox 55, which definitely has got the smash that I'm talking about. The Astrox 77 for you, big smash as well. Um, you know they're all good for smashing. Astrox 88D for you, good smash power. <clears throat> the Astrox 99 also good smash power but good luck trying to get that going. Astrox FB can produce good smashes but so many people have fed back saying they struggle to get decent smashes out of them. So 
hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, that's the 68S covered and the comparison racket's also covered. That should save you a lot of questions and anxiety on which racket to go. Because some of the comments that we get does make me feel like people are anxious as to which racket they should choose. Hopefully that helps. And um, we're gonna now go, go across to the E-Zone smash and maneuver tests. Updates for this year, the E-Zone now will incorporate our court testing results. So we're really compacting the, the score with a lot more tests, five more tests, uh, bringing, making that score even more um, significant because it adds in so many areas of testing now. Um, the E-Zone will have a search function added and a time and date toggle so you can, you know, you can choose which reviews from which era of our testing you want to look at. The website itself will also have a blog, it will have uh, training videos, it will have a place to leave your club details for other people to see and join your club, whichever country you're in. Um, and the only other thing is the E-Zone control test has been stopped, the original one where we're dropping into buckets and scoring because the E-Zone members have said that they don't want us to do that. Instead, we are doing our uh, court testing where we're dropping, slicing across the net, we're trying to do tumbling drop shots with, from the back of the court, sideways, backhands, we're doing all of that and then we judge the control score based on the, that testing as opposed to the bucket testing. They're the major changes that you need to know about. I'm going to move on to the E-Zone now. If you already know a lot about the E-Zone and you want to sign out, let before you go, let us thank you with our appreciation from the bottom of our heart for the support you have shown in the last couple of years, the subscriptions that keep coming in, the shares that keep going out, the likes that keep coming in, um, the reviews, the feedback. Uh, please keep leaving reviews. E-Zone members, please keep leaving reviews. Uh, very, very important that everyone joins in with leaving reviews. It only takes a couple of seconds. On the E-Zone, it's so easy. You can leave one line and three stars, four stars, five stars, and everyone gets the idea of what you think of it. It's so helpful. I mean, everyone does it on Amazon. We can do it on the E-Zone too. Um, make the Bampton community uh, work. Be helpful to other players. For those of you who know about the E-Zone, please feel free to sign in. Thank you again from the bottom of our hearts for joining us today. For those of you who are not familiar with it, let me tell you a little bit about the E-Zone. At www.badmintonracketreview.co.uk, you will find some information on the E-Zone. The E-Zone essentially is a platform where you can compare rackets from 19 world-class manufacturers side by side. Uh, we use the same testing techniques, we use the same terminology, and therefore it, it enables you to test rackets from all these manufacturers, nearly 700 rackets on there now for you to compare. And then once you narrow down, like for example, I was looking for an Astrox racket, I went to the filter tab, in the range I typed in Astrox, press filter, press show all result, results, and all of the Astrox rackets that we've tested, which now is 23, we've tested 23 Astrox rackets, uh, came up, and you can quickly look at, glance at the results and think, and you can you can change how you want to filter the results, and then you press the Yonix logo on the left, and a separate page opens up with all the information on that racket, which will include JPEGs, videos, all the test results, and a members only review video to give you a really decent idea of how the racket performs. So you understand the testing parameters. We, we restring all of our rackets with Yonix BG65 at 25 pounds of tension. We use the Aero Center 30 shuttles for all of our testing, and we have the same player doing the testing. The shots you're about to see now are the smash and maneuver test shots from the E-Zone. Those shots are basically, the basic parameters are we take six shots. If we're happy with them, we then take the two highest speeds uh, and we create an average. For the smash test, we take uh, the highest, two highest shuttle speeds to average a shuttle speed in kilometers per hour, and that gives us a shuttle score, um, a smash score. And for the maneuver speed, we, we uh, measure the head speed, <coughs> beg your pardon, we measure the head speed, and that, the two top head speeds, give us an average maneuver speed in kilometers per hour and a maneuver score. We're going to leave you with the videos now. We'll see you on the next video.